All right, so last chapter, chapter 12. Um, it's on probability. I don't think it's super crazy, but we'll see. Um, sample space and probability. So when we think about, this doesn't have anything to do with any problem specifically, but I think it helps with just a general understanding. What do we mean by probability? Um, it's what you want to happen <clears throat> over everything that could happen. If we kind of keep that in mind as we like move through this chapter, <clears throat> I think that will help. Um, so I got to go through like five examples because there's kind of just like one or two problems of each type of thing. So um, first example, it says um, you flip a coin and uh, draw a marble from a bag that contains two blue marbles and <clears throat> a green marble. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to find the number of outcomes <coughs> um, and list them. Okay, so I have two things happening. I have, I can flip a coin so I'm going to get either a heads or tails when I flip a coin. <clears throat> and then I'm going to pull marbles. So two blue ones and a green one. So here's where it's we got to think about it a little bit. Um, so really, I have a blue number one and a blue number two and then a green. Okay, so when I do heads... I could flip a coin and get heads, and then I could pick the blue one marble. I could flip a coin and get heads, and then I could pick the blue number two marble. I could flip a coin and get heads, and then I could get the green marble. So it's like I can get H for heads and then the blue one. I can get H and the blue two. I can get H and the green. And then essentially I could get the same thing if I did like tails first. So there are six outcomes. One, two, three, four, five, six. You can count them. <clears throat> okay. The other thing that you can do, and this will be helpful like moving forward, um, is there are two possible outcomes when I flip a coin, heads or tails. And there were three possible outcomes when I pulled the marbles. Blue number one, blue number two, or green. So if I do three times two, I'm gonna get six outcomes. So if there was four in the first, you know, four things possible in the first one and eight things possible in the next one, four times eight, there's 32 different outcomes. Okay, so you'll have a couple problems where you got to do, um, like, list the outcomes like that. Okay? All right. Um, so another kind of problem will be um, <clears throat> like this. So it says um, a student taking a quiz... guessed 
um, the for true false questions at random. So just put true or false. Um, what is the probability probability of getting two correct? <clears throat> and so when you don't understand kind of just the general probability, you might think, well, there's four questions, two right, two out of four, or 50%. Doesn't work that way. <clears throat> okay, um, so you kind of need to create like a, a chart. Um, and so I do like number correct and then the outcomes. So it's possible to get zero right. If he gets zero right, then that means he has like an incorrect answer, an incorrect answer, an incorrect answer, and an incorrect answer. Okay, well, it's possible to get one right. So I could, but here's like what happens, watch. I can get the first one correct, and then I could miss the next three. Or I could miss the first one and get the second one right, and then miss the other two. Or I could miss the first two and get the third one right and miss the last one, or I could miss the first three and get the last one right. Okay, so if I get two right, I could get the first two right and then the last two wrong. I could get the first one right and the third one right. I could get the first one right and the last one right. I could miss the first one and get the second and third one right. Um, I could miss the first one and get the second one right, and miss the third one and get the fourth one right. Um, or I could miss the first two and get the last two right. So all of those combinations give me two. Um, if I get three correct, I could get the first three correct. Oops and the last one wrong. I could get the first two right, the third one wrong, and the fourth one right. I get the first one right, second one wrong, the last two right. I get the first one wrong, and then the last three right. Okay, or I could get four right, which means I got them all correct. Okay, so the question is, what is the probability of getting two of them correct? So what do I want to have happen? There's one, two, three, four, five, six different ways for me to get two right. All the things that could happen, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 total outcomes. If I count up all the different like sequences okay um, and you could reduce the fraction if you wanted to three out of eight um, or three divided by eight is 0.37 or 37.5 percent so what's the probability of getting two correct correct if you just randomly guess 37.5 percent so it's quite a bit less than 50%, just saying, well, two out of four, okay? It doesn't necessarily work the way that you might think it does, okay? So that's example two in the book. And so problems, um, well, actually, you're just gonna have one like that because you're doing odd. So number seven in your assignment it has a problem about a game show and getting a prize and stuff. Um, and it says next to it, see example two. So in the book, when it says see example two, then if you're not sure how to do it, you would look back at that one. 
Okay. All right. Um, so another type of question could be using dice. So um, when two six-sided dice um, are rolled, Um, there are 36 possible outcomes. So if you think about it, one dice I roll, there's six different outcomes. The number is one, two, three, four, five, six. Second one, I roll it, there's six different outcomes. Okay, six times six, 36. So we talked about that on another example. Um, Find the probability of, and it will sometimes list like a couple things. So, um, the sum is not six. So when I add the two numbers, I roll them, and I add the two numbers, what's the probability that I don't see six? So <clears throat> it's typically easier on a problem like that to find out, well, how many possibilities are there to get six? And then kind of at 36, and then subtract it to get the ones that you don't get six. So I could roll like a one and then a five. That gives me a six. I could roll a two and then a four. I could roll a three and a three a four and a two, or a five and a one. So this is like dice number one, and this is like dice number two. Okay. Um, kind of looking at something. All right, sorry about that, I got something in my throat. Um, all right, <clears throat> so there's five different ways to get six um, out of 36 outcomes. So, but if I want to be not six, then that means there are 31 out of 36 possibilities that are not six, okay? Um, because five of them make six, 36 minus five is 31. Okay, so there's a pretty high probability of not getting a sum of six. 86.1% chance. Okay. Um, so that's one like thing that could ask get asked. Another one, uh, the sum is less than or equal to Nine. <clears throat> so the sum is less than, I want to know what's the probability of less than or equal to nine. So sometimes, again, I think it's easier, like, you know, if you get one and one and one and two and one and three, like, there's a ton of ways to get less than nine. So I think it's sometimes, like I said, easier to go, well, what if it was more than nine? So not nine, because less than or equal, that's what I want to have happen. What I don't want to have happen is the sum to be 10, 11, or 12. Okay, 12 is maximum, six and six is maximum. Okay, so if I look at it like that, so I say, well, how do I get 12? Well, six and six, how do I get 11? Five and a six. Um, but here's like the tricky part. This is like dice one and dice two, right? So what if I got an 11 with a six on dice one and a five on dice two? Okay, so there's two ways to make an 11. So if you look at this first one, there's, you know, we said to make six, okay, or you know, what was not six, so I chose six. But so here's one and five, but here's one and five like the other way. So there's, you know, you gotta look at both like dice to get a certain 
like combination. Okay, so how could I make a 10? I could do a four and a six. I could do a six and a four, or I could do a five and a five. Okay, obviously the ones that are the same, you don't like reverse them because you're rolling the same like thing. So here there's six outcomes that make what I don't want. You know, like the sum is less than or equal to nine. I don't want any of these. I want everything else. Okay, so this one is 30 out of 36 because there's six things that I don't want. 36 minus six, 30. So this is also a pretty high probability. 30 divided by 36 is 0.833 or 83.3% chance. So if it, if it was the other way around, the sum is less than or equal to 5 you know, or something, and the number is like a lot smaller, then you could just kind of figure out how many of these combinations are going to be what I do want, and then just put that over 36. <clears throat> so you kind of have to initially go like, does it seem like that's going to happen a lot or a little? Um, and then you can kind of decide, do I want to figure out what does, or do I want to figure out what doesn't, and then subtract it? So I don't think there's... Like, a, you need to do it this way or the other, but trying to minimize the work, I think, is obviously a good thing. All right, then you're going to have a problem that, let's see if I can draw this reasonably well. Worse. Um, one, two, okay, there are only three. So, um, you know, we have like a so each of these distances is three. Okay, and then so if it goes in the blue area, oops, let me put ten, twelve. Goes in the blue area, I get 10 points. It's like a dartboard. If it goes in the red area, I get 5 points. If it goes in the black area, I get 2 points. Or there's like this part that's not on the board at all. So the question is, it says you throw a dart at the dartboard, your dart is equally likely to hit any point inside the square. <clears throat> so you're not like super good at darts, so your chances of getting a in the 10 range are better. You're not super terrible at darts, and you're going to hit the wall or something. You have an equal chance to hit the 10, the 5, or the 2. Okay, so equal chance. Are you more likely to get 10 points or are you more likely to get zero points, which would be the green? Okay, so, you know, it's kind of like a area of the shaded region like we just kind of like worked on. <clears throat> so I want, um, so let's figure out, are we more likely... You get 10 or 0. And so it's essentially kind of like the area, like which one has a bigger like area kind of question. So if I get um, <coughs> the 10, well, it has a radius of 3. Okay, so the 10 area, if I did pi r squared, I would get pi 3 squared. 9 pi, okay, um, so that's the area of the 10, but then I want to compare it to the area of the whole member probability, what I want to have happen over everything that could happen. So I want to have the 9 pi area, 
but the whole thing, okay, well, if from here to here is 3 and 3 and 3 is 9, then on the other side it's going to be 9 also, so that would mean 18, and it's a radius, so 18 times 18, or 18 squared. Okay, and so when I divide that, 9 times pi, and then divided by 324, um, I get 0 0.0873, or an 8.73% chance at the 10. Okay, all right, then I need to figure out the area of like the green part and then compare it to the whole board. Well, <clears throat> so how do I figure that out? Well, I do the area of the whole thing. Um, so the area of the whole thing is still 18 times 18. Um, and then I need to do the area of just the square as a radius of nine, three, six, nine for that whole like circle. I think I said square in accident, sorry about that. Um, 81 pi, and then I need to subtract them. And that'll give me the area of the green part. Okay, so 324 minus 81 pi. Okay, so 324 minus 81 pi gives me 69.53. Okay, so that's the area of the green part. So the area, so the probability of getting the green part is what I want to have happen. 69.53 over everything that could happen. 324. Okay, and when I divide that, I get a 0.215 or 21.5 chance. So I am more likely to get zero than I am a 10. Okay, just based on how much space is available. Okay, if you're better at darts, then obviously you're more likely to get a 10 than a zero. If you're terrible at darts, still zero, but I think you get the point. All right, and then the last... I think it's the last, let me double check before I open my mouth and it's not the last, yeah, the last, um, actually I lied, there's two more. Um, so the next one is uh, called experimental probability. So it says like you have this like spinner, like a game spinner where it has like an arrow or something and you spin it. Um, and so we've got like a red area and we have a blue area and we have a green area and a yellow area. Okay, and so it says for each section of the spinner shown has the same area, the spinner was spun 20 times. The table shows the results. So we have a table. Um, and so it says we had five times the spinner stopped on red, nine times it stopped on green, three times it stopped on blue, and three times it stopped on yellow. Okay. For which color is the exper experimental probability of stopping on the color the same as the theoretical probability? Okay, so experimental probability is this. Theoretical Well, they're all four the same. So what are the chances of it stopping on blue? Wouldn't blue be one out of four? 
and wouldn't yellow be one out of four? And wouldn't red be one out of four? And the same as green, right? Oops. Because there's four of them and they all have an equal space. So just based on the size of the thing, it should be one out of four. <clears throat> and so, but based on these, for whatever reason, it stopped on green a lot. And for whatever reason, it stopped on blue and yellow, not as much. Okay, so it wants to know like, well, which one is it the same? Probability, what I want to have happen, if I wanted blue, there's one blue, out of everything that could happen, well, there's four spaces. Okay, so each of these, like, it happened five times out of 20 spins. This happened nine times out of 20 spins. Three out of 20 and three out of 20. So which one of these is the same as one fourth? Five out of 20, because if I reduce five out of 20, one-fourth okay so just because you know flipping a coin one out of two I flip it I can get a head or I can get a tail so there's one thing like I want heads every time you know or I want tails every time okay there's one thing that I want over two things that can happen but it doesn't mean that like just because I flipped the coin and it was heads that it's automatically going to be tails the next time you could get 10 heads in a row okay so it's not that's the difference between experimental probability and theoretical probability theoretical probability each time you flip a coin you have a one out of two or 50 percent chance of getting heads and you have a 50 percent chance of getting tails but if you flipped a coin 20 times the chances are actually pretty good that you're not going to get 10 and 10 okay so you kind of have to that's the difference between theoretical and experimental. Okay? All right, so then last one, and this is kind of a long video, but there's, just like I said, some of these you only have one problem to do in each time. Um, so it says, uh, let's see, we have this chart, and then I'll read the problem. Um, and so we have 200, 400, 600, 800, and 1,000. Um, and this is number of adults. And then down here we have... Sixteen. It says dogs. Six hundred and seventy-seven. It says cats. And a hundred and forty-six. And it says fish. And ninety-three. And a bird. So it says in the United States, a survey of 2,184 adults. Um, ages 18 and over found that 1,328 of them have at least one pet. At least one pet um, the types of pets for these adults are shown in the figure so in the chart what is the probability that a pet owning adult chosen at random has a dog okay so probability that a pet owning adult has a dog okay so we have kind of a outlier information <clears throat> it 
it says pet owning adult. 1328. Not all adults. So we have to kind of read and make sure that we understand what's happening. <clears throat> so what do I want to have happen? 916 different adults have a dog. And there are 1,328 that have a pet, pet-owning adults, or it's about 69% chance. So it's like if I put the name of 1,328 adults that have animals in a hat or a big old bowl or something, what's the probability that I'm going to pull one of the names that has a dog? 69%. Okay? Versus if you did it for all adults that were polled, you would get a much different answer. So let's see, 916 divided by 2184. And we get 0 0.419 or 41.9%. So it's a pretty big difference. Okay, so make sure on some of these that you read what it's saying, <clears throat> okay? So your last problem will have a thing about favorite sports, okay? All right, so a lot of information. It's actually not a lot of problems. Um, I think you're doing three through 19 odd, so it's like 10 problems, just like one or two of each kind of different example, okay? So big thing to take out of today, I think, probability is what you want to have happen over everything that could happen. If we keep that in mind as we move forward, I think we'll be good. Okay? All right. Sorry for the long video. Have a good day. We'll see you tomorrow.